Thank you everyone for joining us for a student support dialogue. Uh, my name is Rachel. I serve as president of Minnesota Association of Counselors of Color. Um, and I'm also an admissions representative from the University of Minnesota Rochester. Um, I'll be moderating part of this panel today. Um, I also want to introduce Lee Parker. Lee, can you wave and maybe say hi? <laughs> Um, he is in our advisory committee um, as part of MNAC and also an admissions counselor from College of St. Scholastica. Um, big shout out to Lee. He worked really hard to gather all our panelists today um, and this event wouldn't be happening without him. So thank you, Lee. Um, uh, you're most welcome. <laughs> yes. And thank um, everyone for being here. Yeah, we've got a great <laughs> turn out. <laughs> she just wants to rip the skin off and then she'll go after chewing it. Um, the purpose of this panel is to allow idea share um, and communications between high school and college personnel um, in light of recent COVID-19 um, global health crisis. Um, those ideas should revolve around how we can best support our students um, as it relates to college and career readiness. Um, so a bit of information, if you haven't used Zoom before, I just wanted to give a bit of um, an overview of what this um, event will look like. Um, we're going to go through submitted questions first. And so um, we had a, a Google form out and a few questions rolled in. So that'll go until around um, 1130 or until we get through all of those questions. And then we'll open it up to our audience for just kind of as they come. Um, I ask that throughout the panel, um, you remain muted um, so as to mitigate any sort of external noises. Um, at 1.30, I am going to turn over to Lee, who will be going through um, those who want to ask questions on the spot. Um, and how we're going to do that, if you go down to the task, bo uh, task bar, you'll notice there's a chat. Um, and there's going to be an, uh, I believe there's an option to raise your hand. Oh, my apologies. You have to go to um, participants. Mm -hmm. That's where you can raise your hand. And so Lee will um, kind of call on you in order as that moves forward. Um, and then when you raise your hand, it's a little blue icon. It looks like a raised hand. Um, when he calls on you, feel free to provide your name, the high school you represent or college you represent, um, and what question um, or who you would be directing your question to. Um, you can provide reactions. That's also on the bottom. So you'll see there's like a clap sign and a thumbs up sign. So you can give that if you um, want to. <laughs> um, and then lastly, we will be recording this webinar um, to be able to provide to other counselors, high school and college. Um, that'll be listed on Manac.org. So I'll keep it, I'll leave it to your discretion if you want to keep your um, video off. It's up to you. Um, we will be providing, let's see, I'll do it right now. We've got a Google form. If you would like contact information from our panelists, feel free to um, write that um, down in the Google form provided in the chat. Um, all right, so at this time, we will have our panelists introduce themselves. Um, they will be providing their name, their school, um, what role they play at their school, and then um, the first restaurant you'll go to once this pandemic is over. Um, is Kristen here? Do you want to get us started? I can't, I don't know if I see her. My name is Kristen Donnelly and I am from Kennedy High School in Bloomington. I am the Career and College Development Coordinator and also the AVID Counselor. Um, and my first restaurant that I would go to is probably the JoJo's Rise and Wine. It's just a local coffee shop down the street. They kind of close indefinitely. Uh, Tony Marie, are you ready? I am. Hi, I'm Tony Marie O'Daniel. I am from Mung College Prep Academy in St. Paul, Minnesota. I am the college and scholarship manager uh, for the past five years, and I am very excited to go to uh, the brand new Texas Roadhouse that opened up in Woodbury, which we got a takeout from, which was pretty good, but oh, I want those hot uh, buns that they make with the cinnamon rolls or the cinnamon butter.
All right, next we have Mitchell. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mitchell Paulson. I am the 11th and 12th grade counselor at South St. Paul High School. Uh, and so wrapped into that role is <clears throat> all of our college and career, uh, college and career prep. And so uh, excited to be here. And uh, I live on Grand Ave in St. Paul, so I'm most excited to uh, swing by Sweeney's, which is a local pub where a bunch of my friends work, um, and check that out once, uh, once everything opens back up. So uh, thanks for having me. Uh, next, we have Laura. Good afternoon. I'm Laura Horton. I work at East Sioux High School in Apple Valley. I'm the school and college counselor there um, and work specifically with gifted and talented students and assessment and testing. My first restaurant, I've been thinking about this, um, Wakami in the Uptown area jumped out at me. They have really good sushi and bento boxes that I've been missing right now. Awesome. All right, next we have Jennifer. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Blado, and I am a licensed school counselor at Spring Lake Park High School. I also serve as the school's college and career resource coordinator. Um, my, I think my number one restaurant that I want to go to after this is all over is probably just Acapulco. I'm dying for their cheese dip right now, and we haven't done any takeout yet, so. Y'all are making me hungry. Um, Javita. Hi everyone, my name is Javita Bahari. I am one of the ninth grade counselors at Highland Senior Park High School. And I also work in the College and Career Resource Center at uh, Highland. Um, when all this is over, the first restaurant I would go to is Cassettis. Um, I've done their curbside pickup, but I love just eating at Cassettis. So that's where I would go. Okay, I'll just finish that one. All right, next we have BG. Hey everyone, I'm the Director of College Counseling at Venture Academy in Minneapolis. Uh, we're a new charter high school. This year is our first senior class. <laughs> um, so they're having a bit of a different senior experience. Um, and I think the restaurant I'm most looking forward to is Beludo. They have pizza and empanadas and they have curbside pickup, but like their vibe is very good. Um, so I definitely miss going there. Nothing says pioneering a high school <laughs> quite like this, right? No. Um, <laughs> next, we have Nathaniel. No. No. Hi, everyone. I'm Nathaniel. No. I'm currently a junior no. at Washburn High School in Minneapolis. Uh, I currently no. serve on the Minneapolis Youth Leadership Council as the at-large member. And I'm also the student rep on the Minneapolis Board of Education. First restaurant I would go to. Easy Kearns on Nicollet. They have like this 250 early riser special. Me and my friends used to go there like before class and get quick, easy, cheap breakfast. My friends would buy like three at a time. Best deal in the city. All right, and lastly, we have Adrian. Hello, uh, my name is Adrian Perryman. I am a manager of college and career access at Genesis Works. Uh, was previously in higher ed with MINAC and whatnot, so what up people, but uh, I think I, uh, I want to go to the Nook. They have the, the Homer Simpson burger this month. I, I'm going to have to get a takeout, but once it's back open, I might go there for more burgers and fries. Awesome. Thank you, panelists. Um, all right, so just a reminder, uh, if we can keep our, the, um, your mic muted, that should be on the bottom left corner of your Zoom screen, um, just to mitigate any sort of noise. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so we'll get started with some questions. Um, like I said, we had submitted questions prior, and around 1.30, we'll um, open it up to the floor. So the first question comes from Hannah, um, college counselor at the University of Minnesota Morris. Um, have students been reaching out to counselors um, online? And what are some of their main priorities right now? Uh, I can jump in and, and kind of 
answer that from the South St. Paul perspective. So we actually um, made contact with every student in our district um, as of Monday. So we have had contact with every kid. Uh, and I, we're using Schoology as our platform. Um, we're using Google Meet to, to meet with students. So uh, in our junior and senior class, I have had contact with, with all of our students so far. Some of them are reaching out several times a day uh, on email. Some are setting up meetings. We're actually doing virtual office hours where kids can just log in, hang out with us for a while every day. Um, and so, yeah, I found that I actually have more contact with, with students um, who maybe won't stop by the counseling office that much uh, during the regular school day because they just are busy and don't have a need. Uh, so it's actually proven to to where I'm able to meet with even more students than I was when I was at school. Uh, so most of the students at this point, especially at the junior senior level, I think are are reaching out and getting the support that they need from us when they need it. I can add on uh, Tony Marie here from Mung College Prep and we are connecting, we are also on Schoology and we're connecting, the deans are connecting with all of the students, uh, making sure that we're, we're getting them. We have a list of students that are not doing the work, um, are not connecting in Schoology, doing attendance every day. So uh, it's about five per class out of 150, so that's not bad. Um, Mainly our juniors and seniors. I've been meeting with juniors and seniors on Schoology conference and it's going pretty well. Um, I still have to meet with a lot, but I've been sending out emails and they've been emailing back and forth. Um, and I guess like the biggest thing that's been going on is, you know, bef Dave, before we closed our, our juniors were supposed to take the ACT. So and so that got canceled at school and they're all freaking out. And now with the SAT being canceled, I'm assuming the ACT for June will be canceled as well. Um, so we'll just have to go Thank through that sure. again. One thing I would like to add is that what's becoming extremely difficult is um, getting connected with the students who maybe their internet has been um, disabled because if a parent lost their job recently, maybe they had the I apologize, Kristen. I think that's okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so um, well, like I was saying that some of the biggest issues are some of our homeless populations, um, the highly mobile students, and then also the students who perhaps had the internet at one time and all, all of a sudden do not. And so um, just trying to make sure that all students um, kind of have, have the things that they need so they can be successful. Yeah, along those lines, I think, sort of dealing with technology and deficits in technology with our students. Um, one of the big problems we're having is a lot of our kids who are moving through the verification process um, and not having access to the people who did their parents' taxes anymore, not having access to a cell phone that they can scan with or if they're needing to do electronic signatures. Um, and I, to be totally honest, have, a lot of, have met a lot of inflexibility on the part of the financial aid offices when I'm working with these kids. Um, and that can be incredibly frustrating. Um, so that is right now, that's the biggest roadblock that we're dealing with because we had a high percentage of students selected for verification to begin with. Uh, so some of you touched based on this already, but um, what are some of those additional barriers or hardships with online learning? Um, perhaps we can get Nathaniel, the student perspective on this. Um, and then also do all students have access to an iPad or some sort of computer for online learning? Okay. Uh, so I think the first couple of weeks, it was kind of more scheduling uh, because, you know, they always teach you make a schedule, but it's a lot different than homework where you're given one assignment or two assignments a night. It's kind of uh, every teacher kind of does their own different thing. So one teacher may do Google Meets, one teacher might not. One teacher may have you sign forms for attendance, one teacher might not. One teacher may give you like four assignments that are due at the end of the week. Some teachers may give you assignment every day. Uh, so you, it, it takes a while to get used to, but it's kind of hard to find any form of like, like concrete structure. Uh, but 
something that I've also noticed like the last couple of days, like this week, like the first couple of weeks, this wasn't really a problem, but now I'm starting to notice the emotional toll. I, I'm kind of like noticing that my friends are, they're kind of getting annoyed with me, like asking for like help with homework. And I can just tell that from staying inside, it's starting to catch, I don't say they're going stir crazy, but they're going stir crazy. So uh, that I think that may continue to become a bigger and bigger pro problem. And then what was the other question? Um, I guess, uh, what sort, does that all, do all students, um, I guess, in your particular districts um, have access to an iPad or some sort of um, tool for online learning? Okay, I think it was 13,000 kids who requested a Chromebook, and right now, in a matter of weeks, we are at 70%, so I think that's a pretty, I think, of course, it's not 100% yet, but it takes a while to get each kid a Chromebook, that kind of setup usually takes years to like get ready. And, you know, being able to get that all done in four weeks has definitely been a task, but uh, I hope we can get to 100%. I think we will, but I think right now we're at like 70%. Um, I'll jump in. I, I think one of the things, um, Jennifer from Spring Lake Park High School, in our district, we are a one-to-one -one district, which means all students are issued an iPad at the start of the year. Um, but of course, that doesn't come without um, other challenges when it comes to technology. So I would say, uh, depending on the day, sometimes my day is heavily consumed with students having issues with their technology. The iPad won't let them download a document or they can't access their Schoology or whatever the issue is. So I know that any given day, I think technology issues are a problem. Um, and same with, I think, many of the other people speaking today. We have a high um, population of students who are low income, um, and I just personally know. So I know that there's maybe three or four other kids at home. Um, parents may be kind of absent, and so I can imagine some of my students are at home taking care of their siblings. They're not trying to actually do high school right now. So those are the kids I worry about the most. All right. Um, our next question comes from Miles, uh, college counselor at St. Mary's University of Minnesota. How can admissions counselors make high school seniors feel more connected to college campuses um, as they express interest in but are not able to visit uh, because of the current restrictions? Um, I can share a little bit. This is Laura Horton from Eastview High School, and I think colleges overall have, it appears you're working really hard to ramp up your virtual visits and um, being available while you're all working from home as well. But I think just overall for seniors and our underclassmen, um, just stressing flexibility and grace and just knowing that this is really different for everybody. And so the timeline of confirming and the information like that they might need as financial situations are changing, um, it's gonna be really different this year. So um, also maybe as right, typically right now we're two weeks out from A1, but a lot of even the feedback from our counseling team are a lot of the seniors, they're not even really talking about college right now. They're, they're focused and worried about missing not having graduation or having prom and so i think it almost feels so disconnected so just um flexibility and grace and understanding that this summer is going to look really different and also um, even though things are changing every day i would say as soon as your campus knows what the outlook is for orientation for dorms for next year to be upfront and honest with those students so they can make the best decision yeah i'd like to add this is tony marie here uh from Mung college prep um, we have seen a drastic change in our students where our the top students are so worried about the world at large as well as their family um that i mean my salutatorian of the school has just said i i'm not doing anything this is my responsibility is to my family and i have to take care of my family and 
So I, literally, we've been having conversations with our top students, but we are seeing a very interesting thing where our lower students are actually kicking it up a notch. And, um, you know, once we can get past all the internet issues and different things like that, these students are actually signing in and, and being responsible. I had one yesterday who contacted me and said, hey, I applied to college for the first time. It's like, wow. <laughs> it was, I think it's going to be a very different world. And I think everybody, all of us have to be very open-minded and patient with all of our students. And I guess I would like to add that um, two of my, or one of my students just sent me an email and, and was asking between two schools and she was asking me, which one should she go to because she didn't get a chance to visit and she was planning on visiting this spring. And so not being able to get out there and actually see, so continuing to do those virtual, I notice a lot of colleges having the links, I gave her the links to the virtual tours. And I think that would be really helpful for students who are still trying to figure out, and they haven't made their decision yet. So they, they really, um, a lot of them don't have the access to getting on campus anymore. So that would be something I think would be great for the college reps. And I just wanna add, so this is Javita from Highland. Um, I've been promoting the virtual tours a lot. Also, some colleges are doing like uh, the webinars at certain times. If those could be recorded so that some of our students are going online at different times just because of uh, family obligations. So having those available always, just not at two o'clock or at three o'clock, but so students can go in. And so like a how-to for verification or a how-to for you've got whatever, just um, having those available, I think would be really helpful to students right now. Um, and just a side note, we uh, added some virtual opportunities for students on the MNAC page. And so if you go to MNAC.org forward slash virtual, um, both high school students, college counselors, you can refer to um, each member institution of MNAC and find virtual information um, for those students. Thank you. Uh, our next question. Um, Graduation, um, what are schools plans given the current circumstances, the unforeseeable future for graduation? Um, so I want to lump graduation and prom sort of together because we have an answer for prom currently. It's um, very outside of the box, but people seem excited about it. And we don't have an answer for graduation yet. Um, so for prom, we're doing a virtual prom. Um, and there's going to be like a DJ in a Zoom room and kids are getting prom packages dropped off on their doors. Um, it's going to be very exciting. <laughs> the kids don't know about it yet. So if you connect with any venture students, please don't talk to them about it. <laughs> um, and then the, uh, for graduation, so our graduation was going to be hosted at St. Thomas. Um, St. Thomas has canceled their graduation, but they have yet to sort of say they're not going to host any more events in their space. So we're still sort of riding the unknown before we're willing to sort of pull the plug on graduation. We know we'll definitely do something, especially because this is our first senior class, um, whether it's a virtual sort of crossing the stage or maybe we can have families come into a space one at a time or something just to celebrate them. Um, but it is definitely first and foremost on our leadership's mind and trying to figure out how to navigate that and celebrate this class as best we can. Can I ask what's in the package you're providing students? Um, I think it's like fun things like bubbles and like, you know, um, what do you call these like confetti things and stuff like that. Um, and then we're getting like uh, signs to put on their yards that say like Venture Senior lives here and all that stuff. Um, so, I mean, we have the luxury of being a very small school. So we only have 47 seniors, so we can do that. Um, but I think, you know, it, it's going to be a good answer to a very complex situation. Uh, hi everyone, Nathaniel. Uh, so this is like an update as of like 30 minutes ago, but uh, they first rescheduled prom to June 6th. Now they're considering moving it to July. I don't know how that's going to work. If it's going to be middle of summer prom, I don't even know if we're going to be able to go back and congregate in a group. Uh, but right now, 
they don't really know what's going on at graduation. I know the district's working on something, but uh, they say it's either going to go virtual on May 29th or it's going to be delayed until July. So, but right now they still really don't know. Um, this is Jennifer from Spring Lake Park High School. Um, our school district is being very um, particular about how they're making their decisions. They're only canceling or rescheduling things if it's being required by the governor. So right now our prom did get postponed. Um, no date has been decided yet. Um, so until the governor decides that we need to close down for a longer period of time, they're not gonna touch graduation yet. Um, however, we are already discussing what we will do with our um, awards and um, scholarship night. And I don't know how many other high schools also have a scholarship night. Um, but one thing that we have definitely ran into in, um, typically we do a local scholarship application for all of our seniors. Some of our biggest donors this year, which are typically the American Legion and the Lions Club, um, they're holding out on providing the, the money that they normally do because of the unforeseen future financially. Um, and we're we're down a little over $25,000 of what we normally give out for our high school seniors. Um, so I think this is gonna impact our senior class financially pretty significantly, which is, um, our kids don't know that yet, but our counseling office does. This is Tony Marie from Mung pa College Prep and um, our graduation is being postponed, prom is being postponed to whatever date. Um, our award ceremony will be virtual. And so that should be fun. And we are doing, a, we always do a big senior signing day. And so we've asked, um, we're getting all the colleges together uh, that will have students matriculating to them and asking them to do a video and send swag if, they can if they can even get to their offices but um, and then we're going to do a, um, a, a virtual uh, presentation to all the seniors and then we'll be taking a gift bag and uh, sign to each one of their houses or where they live. That's good publicity thank you. Um, all right, one of our last questions here. Um, any success stories or sort of a silver lining for students in the midst of these circumstances? Maybe that you've personally witnessed or um, heard from other teachers or counselors? I think this is Laura from Eastview. Um, I think we heard at the beginning, students were almost feeling like, oh, this is a snow day and kind of excited to be have school canceled but we've heard over and over again from kids that you probably wouldn't think saying I never would have thought this but I wish we were back in school and they really do miss the structure the friends the teachers you know there for them so um, I think hopefully then when this is all over everyone just has such more of a, you know appreciation and a little bit of excitement heading back into the building and all the support and love that we can have within the dom of our building. So. Okay. Uh, I think it, oh, hi, Ryan, Nathaniel. I think it was the Thursday, Friday, uh, before they, before the governor called off school that Sunday, uh, where kids were, I don't say they're freaking out, but those are probably like the least productive two days of my life. Like, Kid just knew what was coming, and then on Monday, I agree. Kids were treating it like a snow day. They were, they, they were so excited. I don't even think I said goodbye to my teachers. Everyone thought they were gonna be back in a week or two. Uh, but I think it was the first day of distance learning. It was my first hour class, and we were doing our first like virtual meet. And I was, I was like a hundred percent sure we were gonna, like no one was gonna be there. I set a pretty low bar. I expected. I'm being a little brutally honest right now, but I expected nobody to be there. Uh, but I was kind of surprised. We had perfect attendance. I think that was the first time all year first hours had perfect attendance. Like that doesn't happen on a normal school day. So I think kids were like excited to actually be in class, like see peers, like see a teacher, just like any sense of normalcy. So I think since then our truancy rates have actually been lower on online learning than it has been for regular school. 
Yeah, I liked what, this is Kristen Donnelly from Kennedy High School. I liked what Nathaniel said, and um, I, I also um, run a program called Strive, Students Taking a Renewed Interest in the Value of Education. And um, these are students typically that kind of have had some struggles in school and really want to finish their senior year strong. And we have meetings twice a month, and we decided with the Bloomington Rotarians that we would continue having our Strive meetings, but we decided to make them optional in case if a student was unable to tell them if they had to work. And um, we just had our meeting, and we like 15 students showed up, and they were able to come. And then I got emails from students explaining why they couldn't come because they had to work or they were doing something else. And I just thought that was just really, um, promising and exactly what Nathaniel said is that um, they just really enjoyed seeing each other and being connected as a group. So having that consistency and having teachers check in with their students and even making a video of themselves talking to the students so they can get kind of that daily check-in I think is important for students. Yeah, this is uh, Mitchell at South St. Paul. I would say that uh, the thing that we've seen that is, has been great is the ability of young people to adjust on the fly, embrace the unknown, and, and really kind of lean into the distance learning. Uh, we were concerned what, with what we were going to have for attendance or students falling behind or even students who are either accepted to school or, or are finishing up um, and to just kind of fall off our last semester, our third try here. And I think that we've really found that despite helping out and supporting their families and, and being rather isolated and kind of grieving some of the stuff that they're missing out on to finish up school. Uh, the College of Admissions reps who are here are really lucky that the students that are coming to their campus next year are already able to advocate for themselves and have learned a lot about their ability to, to just kind of navigate unforeseen circumstances. And so we uh, at South St. Paul for sure just kind of overall have been thrilled with the way that uh, our students and, and young people have been able just to embracing the just and, and are really making the most of, of what's going on. Thank you. Um, one last thing, I just wanted to uh, kind of get a gauge from one of our outside organizations. Adrian, um, in regards to Genesis Works, what are some tone, what's the tone uh, for your uh, office and how has this entire situation impacted what you're able to do? Yeah, Genesis Works, uh, for those who don't know, we're a nonprofit organization. We work with high school students, get them internships at pretty large companies, Lando Lakes, Medtronic, things like that. So it's been very interesting. Previously, we kind of had a policy where students were not allowed to work from home. We just didn't feel that was the best experience for them learning on the job and whatnot. But we're able to adjust that. And fortunately, a good amount of companies have been able to support that and allow their students to work from home. But it has been very interesting with our students the ones who aren't able to work, we've kind of seen a drastic day and night scenario with the ones who are working and still uh, having school and whatnot are responsive and involved, but those who are not able to work are kind of more distance, harder to reach out to them. Uh, but uh, beyond that, like we've been very, brought a lot of innovation out, um, like when people are talking about doing proms online, we're talking about doing our end of the year celebration online potentially and doing some things uh, via Zoom and other ways. But it has been uh, difficult to, to contact students um, that aren't as engaged, uh, but we're trying to make sure the students are prioritizing finishing high school, getting to the next step, and then other things beyond that. Um, but it has been very helpful to hear all the input from high schools and the questions from colleges as well. But that's, that's what we're doing. But yeah, we're all working from home, but we're all available to help if there's any way we can assist as well. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will open up the floor to questions. Um, Lee, I don't see that there's a raised hand option. Does it, do other people see it? No, just put okay. something in chat. Okay, very good. Yeah, and someone made a chat about, yeah, Genesis Works have been able to do interviews virtually via Zoom. We got some more coming up today. We're able to, yeah, we had to kind of drastically change within a, a week to do things. And so we're glad that students are able to work with us still and, and be a part of the program. 
Yeah, this is Kristen Donnelly from Kennedy. Um, so Adrian and I added that and I've been working with Genesis Works and um, they've been just continuously communicating with uh, counselors and the teachers to make sure that they're connecting with all the students and getting them their interviews. So we just so appreciate like how, how they've just adapted and switched. Um, Gabriella Miller um, asked the question, um, Parent, uh, people wanting to stay home versus living in a dorm. I have not heard students talking about that, but me, just kind of my parent lens, that crossed my mind. And so that's just something that four-year colleges and colleges that have dorm living, um, that'd be something that would be kind of, I think, on my mind as a parent. And there'd be, there's that fear there. And so just something that, um, you know, something to think about because it's something that um, has crossed my mind as well. Yeah, just, I'll, I, go sorry. ahead. Oh, I, really? echo that. Um, I haven't had any kids talk about that. They very much feel like they're going to campus in the fall. I'm going to be living in the dorms, but I definitely have had parents asking um, what is fall going to look like. Uh, one just like quick plug. So I've been trying, we've been, my coworkers and I have been trying to gather sort of resources of schools that have tentative or more fleshed out plans for the fall on their websites. If anyone is looking for a really excellent model, Beloit College has done a phenomenal job putting information out there for students, um, both for their current students and the students who are coming in the fall. Just like very clear language and then also very well justified and explained because clearly they got questions after they posted something and it's all centralized. Um, it's really wonderful. They're also really demonstrating some very creative outside of the box thinking and how they want to move forward with the fall semester. So that I, if you're looking for a place for someone who's doing something different, but in a very concise way, they have some good information. I'll link it in the chat. This is Adrian. Tori Oh, Adrian, go ahead. Adrian, there's a question for you. And can you speak more to more on how Genesis works still operating to offer students a work experience? Yes, yeah, so the our students are mainly in tech and business careers. Some work at like help desks, some do coding, programming, things like that. But fortunately, a majority of, uh, I think we have about 300 or so students, more than half of them have, have been able to, to work from home, uh, whether they were set up with laptops or devices from their employer and able to, or virtual phones via their uh, devices as well to do that work. Uh, and then, yeah clocking in, working from home as we all are, and doing that. Some of the other students who were unable to work from home or they're, they were on the lower end of the spectrum of when people were getting let go and whatnot, uh, Genesis Works has been able to support them through this month. We're kind of taking it month by month how much we can afford to pay students for working from home and giving them other learning opportunities, to online certificate training and different things as well. But for the most part, we've been yeah, checking in with students via Zoom to see how they're doing, uh, working with their supervisors in other ways to try and get them the most real life work experience from home and still getting them paid because we know they're counting on these dollars to potentially go to college next year and support their families. This is Tony Marie from HCPA and we have had some students that have decided not to go away to school. So if they were going to Iowa or Chicago or Indiana, they're, they're now choosing schools in Minnesota, but we're able to connect with them to say, hey, how about trying to live on campus? And so you still get that growth mindset and learn about yourself. So we're sort of playing that you know, we understand that leaving the state is a lot harder now um, because of the family responsibilities and things like that. So we have seen some of that, but they are open to uh, possibly staying on campus closer to home. Yeah, uh, I've actually had that conversation with a couple of friends, and the way we kind of go about it is, uh, who knows when you'll actually be back on campus because right now I'm not an epidemiologist, but they're saying as far as 2022 and some kids are kind of thinking, why, why should I be paying this much to take online classes at home? And is that really even worth it? So I think that's kind of like factoring in like the cost and it's kind of, because now kids are taking online classes at home. I guess we could have always done that, but I guess now it's always possible. So it, it just kind of makes you wonder 
you know, is it is it worth the cost considering who knows how long you'll actually be on campus with classmates uh, and if it's affordable. Nuwan, could you ask your question, please? Hi, thank you. Um, this is Nuwan from UMD Admissions. I was just wondering, especially for the school counselors, um, if you had conversation with your seniors regarding taking gap years, um, you know, maybe they want to stay home and work or if they just want to postpone their enrollment for a year. Um, I can respond to that. Most of the seniors that we have had contact with and all of our counselors have reached out to all of our seniors um, within our first two weeks of online learning. Not one of them has wanted or suggested that they want to pursue a gap year at this time. I think everybody is still in the boat of wanting. They're really hopeful that everything is going to return to normal and that they'll be able to start college in the fall. So I think everybody's holding on to hope, at least at Spring Lake Park. And this is Kristen Dolly. Oh, go ahead, Mike Mitchell. Yeah, uh, we, we also haven't had a lot of students who have uh, been talking about taking a gap year outside of those that were already considering it. I think uh, most of the students, um, yeah, are, are holding on to the, the hope that they'll be able to uh, have a return to normalcy by fall and we'll be able to, to start kind of as expected. Um, so we haven't had a whole lot of, of students kind of reaching out and kind of at this point changing their plans from what they what they have been based on the current situations. I think they're still pretty hopeful that they'll be able to, to start as expected. Uh, this is Tony Marie. Sure. And yeah, oh, go ahead. This is Tony Marie and we have had quite a few students looking at gap years. And they said, you know, as Nathan was saying, we don't even know if school's, school's gonna be going, you know, and money is a huge object for them, so. Uh, we've we've had I've probably had six or eight students minimum that have been looking at that. Other questions? Are uh, Kristen? Did you have a comment? Oh, I was just going to concur that that there is just a lot of hope. Um, the young people just um, really are filled. I mean, a lot of with pos positivity and just are hopeful for their futures. And um, I just think that the more they can keep planning and moving towards their future, it's going to be really helpful for their for them. I did have a quick question. If folks could address how they're. Um, their schools and districts are handling food, um, food service and food issues or shortages? I, could... I can answer um, just from Bloomington Public Schools perspective. Um, it's a really robust um, service. They um, have spots where people can come up and pick up food, um, their lunches. And then also um, we have a food delivery service for um, a lot of our homeless students and um, highly mobile students, um, the ones that we're really concerned about. And they're delivering, um, I believe they're working with um, our food pantry in the community, Veep, and they're delivering um, non-perishable food and they're also delivering um, lunches. And so it's, it's re really robust. So um, it's a lot, lot of deliveries. Yeah, so for St. Paul, what's happening is it has changed the last couple of weeks. Um, at first, it started off with uh, schools, certain schools in certain areas being pickup sites, and then also food, uh, packages of food being delivered to students' uh, bus stops. But now, I think next week, what they're doing is they're only um, students or families who have expressed the need, the food will be delivered directly to them. So it's changed, but that's where it's going as of right now. Yeah, uh, so with MPS, uh, we have something very similar where it used to be, well, it technically still is, but it was you come in, you get your meal from a specific location, but I think they dialed back on that a little because that's a lot of contact, you know, leaving the house once or twice a day compared to someone who doesn't need that. They can just go on like a target run, stay home for two weeks. So I think what they started doing is that you would get 
two meals a day that you would pick up on Monday, and that's supposed to last you the week, I think. And then, from what I understand, there's also been a lot of work with Sheridan Story, and they've been, I think, something like 10,000 meals a week that they've been putting together. Uh, but yeah, besides that, I also think they're also working uh, with bus drivers to deliver packages as well. Are there other questions? Um, Chad, do you want to ask your question? Um, otherwise, I can I can ask it for you. <laughs> um, so, while students taking a gap year seems to be in the minority, do we have any idea? Do we have any ideas on advising students to maintain their academic momentum? Um, another point off of that, do you feel that students are considering community college over a four-year institution uh, due to the possibility of online courses? I can take part of that. Um, we're not seeing a lot of students looking at um, online courses at two-year schools. If they were looking at four-year and they're worried about school, they're looking more at a gap year than they're looking at going to a two-year school. Um, I guess that's the biggest thing I'm, we're seeing. Um, this is Jennifer from Spring Lake Park High School. Um, I think motivation is definitely becoming more of a concern the longer we're going into this um, extended flexible learning is what our school district is calling it, but this online learning, even some of my most highly motivated students, I had uh, one of my seniors who very academically gifted and she, um, she could have graduated early. Um, she decided to not forego that opportunity, but now um, that we're staying home and she's not able to participate in the regular school activities, she's really not doing anything with school. Um, and so I'm a little fearful that as we get into week four and week five of online learning that keeping our students academically motivating, motivated will be challenging or become more of a challenge. Um, but again, um, still at, at this point, none of our students at our high school at least are talking about going to a two year versus a four year or anything. They're still really holding on to hope that things will be able to return to normal. Uh, Jenna, did you have a question? Jenna Anderson. Yes, and it's also a comment as well. Um, I am the director of admissions at Minneapolis College, and I'm so glad that um, you're able to bring all of us together today. I just wanted to comment with regarding to keeping students academically, um, you know, progressing, I guess, and keep, keep their eyes going forward as we all sit through this challenging time. Um, you know, the two-year colleges, and I'll, I'll speak for my colleagues out there, um, you know, we're here to support students. We know that our students transfer to the four-year institutions and the campuses and our credits are there for students. We have lots of support available. So if there are students that for whatever reason we're planning on going out of state, are looking in state, aren't sure anymore about what they want to do, please let them know any of us within you know the minnesota state system with those two-year options we're here for you we've got your kids <laughs> erica would you like to ask your question yeah thank you um this is erica with the university of st thomas and the Doherty family college i know that we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier but I'm just wondering, aside from the virtual tours that we talked about and kind of being flexible in terms of financial aid, um, verification process, things like that, are there other things that your students are needing right now in terms of, I guess, what can we best do to be supporting them right now? I think in our office, we do a lot of speculation about what we think students need during this time, but I know that all of you counselors and advocates are the ones who are really talking to them on a daily basis. Is there anything that you think would be helpful for us to know? Um, from my end, I think something that could be really helpful is that 
in a normal world, when a student has a question that they're trying to navigate, it's oftentimes they're in my office answering that question with me, or sorry, asking that question with me next to them. And that's not something that can happen anymore. Um, and so a lot of, I'm getting a lot of pushback from admissions officers saying like, the student really needs to be calling or I need to be talking to the student. And it's like, yes, I understand that, but they don't have, they don't, understand what you're telling them without someone there to help translate what's going on with the higher ed language. Um, and it's causing a lot of frustration to kids. Like the, it's really making it feel like they are just up against roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And they're just sort of giving up in terms of communicating then. That's a great, great point. So is it, it's more helpful for us, or I'm sorry, for the students, if we can communicate directly with counselors, if a counselor were to reach out to us instead of saying, oh, we really need to talk with a student about this to go ahead and have that conversation with the counselor. Yeah, because I think like, honestly, at this point, like we're, we are the best point of communication for kids. Like we're, I know I'm busting my butt getting a hold of them every yeah. single day. Um, and that's challenging. And if I can sort of become like a virtual bridge between the admissions office and the student in a way that like I would be normally counseling with them sitting next to me, um, that sort of flexibility given the timing of this, like what's happening right now would be much, much, much appreciated. Would that's it be great. helpful Thanks, to, Beijing. would it be helpful to have a Zoom meeting where you and the student are both linked in? Yeah, so I think that's like the ideal scenario, but the reality is, is that like we, my kids don't have the technology for that right now. Um, and so it's, and their internet is all over the place. Um, so like when it's, it, we're just not there yet in terms of, and especially with a May 1st deadline and kids feeling pressure to make decisions, it's very stressful for them. I think this is Beth from St. Scholastica. I think part of the issue that comes into is when it's things that are, where we're, we aren't allowed to talk about things due to federal law. It isn't the admissions counselors trying to put up roadblocks. It's we can get in serious trouble, <laughs> legal trouble, if we share things that, and don't have a FERPA release. For yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. But I think there's perhaps maybe we, like myself and the admissions counselor, we could be talking through like, what is the language that's being used when you're talking with sure. the student or sort of preview it a little bit. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. A lot of times when I then circle back with the kid after they've talked with a financial aid officer or an admissions counselor, they have no idea what was communicated. Okay, yeah, that kind of thing, absolutely. Um, so this is Kristen uh, Donnelly from Kennedy High School. So my, my biggest concern kind of with uh, what Erica kind of brought up is um, just kind of that help for students when they get that verification letter. Usually they come into my office with holding the verification letter going, what does this mean? And so, um, and I just have to read through it and kind of help them understand it. And so, and guide them through that. So just having that, um, you know, is there a number to call for them just to talk with someone or, you know, and I'm sure you have that already, but I think that's my biggest fear is all those verification letters that students are dealing with. And then also the award letters. Um, you know, a lot of students um, maybe had a job and they've lost a job. So now they're really very concerned about um, making money for college. Um, and so seeing those award letters and um, understanding them um, is really helpful. Thanks, Kristen. Um, one question I do see on here is, um, and this is open to uh, perhaps college counselors, uh, we'll kind of just take as we can, um, whoever wants to speak, uh, what are some, sorry, I forgot my train of thought. Um, <laughs> Janelle? No. Sorry, um, pass-fail, that was a question, um, is pass-fail grading an option for um, high school students, and then, I mean, both for um, college, uh, you can vote yes or no, maybe, <laughs> on the chat. So, uh, just adding to that question, um, we just had a question asked of us, um, kind of, what are we hearing from the colleges, and whether or not a student having a pass um, for an EP class, let's say, or for their chemistry class that's required, let's say a class that's required,
for college, um, what what is that going to do with their college admissions? And so that's something that we're kind of asking that question. From what, what I can see is a lot of colleges are saying they're being flexible, but I think that's something we would like to hear from colleges just across the board is whether or not this is going to impact students. Yeah, can I add on to that really quickly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so we're kind of considering the credit and no credit. I think there's like a problem with like the NCAA, like they need grades or something like that, but hopefully next quarter they go credit, no credit. But I think right now it's kind of a lot of like unnecessary stress with, I don't think my grades all mine really reflect what I'm like as a student. And especially with like standardized tests, I, I please hope every college goes test optional. I, I do not think a 45 minute online test in August is going to like predict how well you're going to do in college. Uh, but I don't know. We get a lot of I don't knows or like we don't know the answer yet when it's like, how is a college going to look at this? So just kind of like a bunch of like, we don't know. We literally don't know what to do. And it makes college a lot less appealing. Um, do other counselors find that that's sort of the tone? Uh, do students hope that? Um counselors or college counselors are more flexible um, with testing AP, ACT, SAT. This is Jennifer from Spring Lake Park High School. Um, I am with you, Nathaniel. I um, am really concerned just from a counselor perspective on how this is gonna impact our juniors moving forward. Um, their tri trimester three grades, None of our juniors at our school took the ACT yet unless they took it early on and they're high achievers and we're hoping to do it multiple times. Um, I agree a 45 minute in home test isn't going to show a whole lot of anything to a college either. Um, so from my perspective, I am really hoping that most colleges come next fall are going to be more flexible with this last trimester of grades or semester of grades. They're going to be more flexible when it comes to um, those standardized testing pieces as well. I, this is Laura from Eastview, and I just have to say, you know, I agree um, that I think is overall adding to the stress and the unknowns um, that on an outside, whether you believe colleges overall should be test optional or not, um, which I think a lot of us have, have the same feeling that it, despite of this, just the limited testing opportunities, the stress, the, even asking a high school to now have a test every month in the fall like is just not realistic and so that would be my big push in our counselors um, and families just if colleges i know it comes from higher up but to really consider making it test optional for all juniors for this coming year and then another component too i've seen some language from colleges saying um well we'll understand but you can send a teacher letter of recommendation um, that might tell you tell us more about why your grades declined. I think anything to ease the process um, Requiring more documents more teacher letters or counselor letters that is going to do the opposite of it and it's going to add a lot more stress and um, More limited resources when and if we come back to school So just anything to simplify the process understanding that everyone's in the same boat together test options are limited and it's going to be different next year and just accepting that and whether you go test optional one year or um, down the road it just is the right thing to do for next year one thing to um, this is Kristen Daly from Kennedy um, I want to add is like when we if we do if schools do go from a pass to no credit if a student receives a no credit, it might not be because they slacked off. It might just be because they had babysitting responsibilities. It might be because um, they're working full time because maybe their parents lost their job and they work in a grocery store so they can work as many hours as they can get. Um, I just know that students um, kind of when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, there's these other pressing needs and um, like then schoolwork, no matter what type of student they are, it could just fall down and it just might become too overwhelming and maybe a family member sick. I mean, we just, there's so many things that could happen. So, um, you know, when colleges look at grades, you know, if they see no credits, um, it, it really might not be because they're a bad student. And so looking at some of the other things prior to 
um, or some of the things afterwards, um, I think would be really helpful to not judge on the no credit at this time. Thank you very much. Um, we're just about out of time. So thank you so much for everyone who um, attended this. We will be putting this on the MNAC website if you'd like to reference or share it with someone. Um, in addition to that, uh, feel free to go on our MNAC.org forward slash virtual um, college counselors. If you have any uh, specific updates that you would like us to put on that page, feel free to contact um, president at MNAC.org. Um, one last plug, um, I uh, wanted to make note that we are going to be ha holding a virtual conference this year um, and opening it up to both high school and college counselors. Um, Raul, do you wanna make a note of that? Raul Aguilar is our, um, our president-elect. Hi everyone, hope you're doing good and taking care of yourself. Um, yes, we'll be hosting a virtual conference this year. Um, Monday, August the 3rd, and Tuesday, August the 4th. We're working with our communications and tech folks right now um, to launch that shortly with registration for both high school and um, college counselors here. So hopefully we can have some good content to really share and develop community and figuring out how we can support our students and access here. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.